So let's figure out the gravitational force between the sun and the earth. So of course the earth attracts the sun, the sun attracts the earth with that same gravitational force. Okay, so we would have to simply do the value of G that I had given you, 6.67, uh, uh, it was uh, 6.673, right? Times set it to negative 11. Times the mass of the, let's give you some room here, 6.673. the mass of the uh, sun, which is 1.989 times 10 to the 30. Times the mass of the earth. Divided by distance between them squared, which is 1 AU. So 1.4. 496 times 10 to the 11 squared. So let's calculate this. You watching the video can also calculate things with me as I am uh, doing these so that you could also get practice, you know. 6.673 times 1.989 times 5.974 Times 10 to the power 54 times 10 to the power negative 11 divided by 1.496 squared divided by 10 to the power 22. So 3.543 times 10 to the 22 newtons. That's the force between the sun and the earth. Okay, 3.543 times 10 to the 22 newtons, pretty big. Okay, so now let's compare that to the, the force between uh, the sun and the moon and the earth and the moon. Okay, so uh, let's now uh, change this here. Uh, let's put the so let's now do the this, uh, the force between the sun and the moon. So I'm going to put the mass of the moon here, seven point three four nine times ten to the twenty two. And the distance between the, the sun and the moon, well, of course, it depends as the moon is going around the earth. Sometimes the moon will be on the, the far side, sometimes close, but it really won't change this distance too much because it's uh, the distance between the earth and the moon is 10 to the 8. It's a thousand times uh, less than this, the distance between the sun and the earth. So we, we don't really have to change that too much. All we have to do is just incorporate this so the, let's divide the answer we got by the mass of the Earth, which was this one. And now multiply this by the mass of the moon. gives us the answer, the mass, the force between the sun and the, the moon is going to be 4.358 times 10 to the 20th newtons. So about, uh, because the moon is about 100 times lighter than the earth, uh, this is going to be roughly about 100 times lighter than the force between the sun and the moon is going to be about 100 times lighter than the force between the sun and the earth. Okay, so now let's do the force between the Earth and the Moon. Well, that one, we, this is going to change a lot here. And then here, we're going to have to put the distance between the, 
the earth and the moon, okay, which is going to be so let's now calculate this from scratch 6.673 times 5.974 times 7.349 okay, times 10 to the power, it's going to be 46 times 10 to the power negative 11 divided by 3.844 squared divided by 10 to the power 16. So now the, the, the force between the Earth and the Moon is going to come out to be 1.983 times 10 to the 20th newtons. Okay, um, so you could see here kind of interesting stuff came out of this. Um, if we take the ratio of the, the force, uh, you can see the force of the sun and the moon is about 100 times lighter than the force between the sun and the earth, okay? But if you compare these two, the force between the sun and the earth, the force between the earth and the moon, uh, the, I mean, sorry, the force between the sun and the moon, this, this one here, so let's take a ratio of the force between sun and moon divided by the force between the, the sun and the earth, the, the earth and the moon, We're going to have a ratio of um, 4.358 times 10 to the 22 divided by, by no, 10 to the 20 divided by 1.983 times 10 to the 20. So basically, they are of the same order of magnitude. So the 10 to the 20th cancel. And you probably get a ratio of about about two, a little more than uh, two. About two point two. So the Earth, the Moon, feels the gravitational force of the Sun twice as strong as the gravitational force of the Earth. So the Moon, of course, is doing two things, right? It's going around the it's going around the sun, and it's going around the earth. So if this is the sun, here's the earth, here's the moon. The moon is going around the earth with this much force, the 1.983 times 10 to the 20th. But the moon is also feeling the gravitational effect of the sun. So uh, as the earth is going around the sun, the moon is, the moon is going around the earth. So you could draw the path of the moon as the moon is going around the Earth, the moon is also going around the sun. And the, the moon feels the gravitational force of the sun twice as strong, okay? So that's something probably we didn't think about. Uh, most people would probably think the Earth attracts the moon with a greater force than the sun attracts the moon, okay? Because the moon is primarily going around the Earth. But you can see here that the sun attracts the moon stronger so the moon is actually even strongly more strongly attracted to the sun okay let's also do an example with Uranus and Neptune the historically it's very very interesting after the discovery accidental discovery of Uranus by William Herschel about 50 years later about 1830 uh, John uh, Couch Adams and Urban de Verrier uh, they were studying the orbit of Uranus and they noticed that gravitationally the orbit of Uranus can't be explained simply by the gravity of the Sun so uh, they had to they had to replace another planet they predicted the existence of Neptune outside of the orbit of Uranus because of its gravitational effect so let's compare those so we can call this our example too 